All right, everybody. Welcome to the Epicenter Moscow China Qualifier. This is Vici Gaming Newbie Potential versus Newbie. I'm Basekip. It's great to be here casting for you guys. And let's get into this first game. So this is the very first day of play for this China Qualifier. So I guess it's worth uh, letting you guys know a little bit about what's going on for this tournament. Uh, so this is, as I said, the China Qualifier. We have a double elimination bracket and that's it. It's just double elim. There's one spot available, I'm pretty sure, for the China Qualifier. So whoever wins the double elimination bracket makes it. We're in the upper bracket right now playing the very first round. Uh, and this should be a relatively interesting match. I feel like Newbie coming off the back of Kiev have a bit of a chip on their shoulder, perhaps a little bit of something to prove. Uh, IG have already been invited through to the main event for this competition, so they're not going to be participating in the qualifier. And after Newbie's somewhat disappointing, I think probably disappointing for them, uh, run at Kiev, they've probably got... You know, they they want to show that they're still a top contender as far as the Chinese scene goes. Five so remaining. We'll see. I'm, I'm favoring Newbie a little bit for this match against VGP, but we'll see what they Reserve can what time. they can get done. Of course, we're probably still going to be seeing some pretty heavily uh, Kiev-flavored drafts as things Dying. go, since we're still on the exact same patch. Magnus getting picked up here first by VGP. Newbie going for their Legion oh, Commander, yeah. which was... I think it's their most picked hero so far this patch. They really love back. getting the Legion whenever they can. Uh, and they're going to follow that up with the Silencer. In terms of bans, VGP get rid of the Nyx Assassin, which Newbie have been running a decent amount as a support. I feel like Newbie as a team really, really like to have a second initiator in their four position, even though they do pick uh, fairly good initiation heroes for KP in the offlane. Like the Legion, they've been playing a decent amount of, say, Earth Spirit, uh, and even Nyx and Sand King, who I think are two fairly greedy four position supports as things go, uh, have also been pretty popular from them. So, we'll see where we go from here. No Warlock! Um, I don't know if it's all that likely for either team. Newbie already have the Silencer, so that's probably their position 5 covered. Um, and VGP... I, I don't know how much you want to play Warlock into the Silencer. I feel like uh, Warlock's pretty good against Legion Commander. In general, just because somebody gets dual, but then you can just drop the rock and counter initiate. You know, whether that's on the Legion Commander or whether that's dropping the rock behind the person that's dueled to be able to save them from uh, a bunch of dual damage. But yeah, uh, maybe maybe not a Warlock game here just because the silencer is going to make that a little bit more difficult. Um, Ursa also very popular at Kiev, so not too shocked to see him Five here. I think one of the safe lane heroes that can kind of stand up to Legion Commander a little bit. If you have any Reserve friends time. who are carry players at the moment, you've probably heard a whole bunch uh, about Legion Commander, and I guess even support players for that matter, and heard a whole bunch about Legion Commander and how annoying she is uh, in the off lane at the moment. So not at all surprised to, to see this picked up. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about a little bit for newbie, you know, in terms of their Kiev run was, I feel like they, I feel like in their game, their match against Liquid, you know, game one looked relatively convincing, game two they were winning extremely hard up to a certain point, and then they just kind of threw away three, uh, three team fights in a row, and the game swung right back on them, it was like three team fights and two really bad Roshan decisions, and uh, that really seemed to to rattle them a little bit, and I think that, that showed up in their play in Game 3. So we'll see if this qualifier can be a little bit of a confidence booster, uh, or if, they, if they're if they going to struggle Ten here and you know, still still trying to work out that team cohesion. Because by all accounts, they're in a, an extremely remaining. solid team. Unfortunately, it looks like we don't have a ticket set up just yet for this tournament, so everybody's Reserve names time. are going to be uh, just their, their pub names. People are not used to having to set their, their names as their player names anymore with the the way that the system works all right so we are going to see that sand king that i was talking about so we will get that secondary kind of position four uh initiator for newbie pretty good kill potential between the two supports at the moment so should be able to zone the magnus pretty decently but it's magnus he's going to go hit jungle creeps uh that's not really a huge deal overall we get a crystal maiden and a ricky band out by newbie as juggernaut and ember will be removed by vgp so it looks like vgp have been doing their homework they've, they've done some research these are definitely heroes that newbie were picking a lot of at kiev and that's i guess kind of the downside of being the you know being the team that's considered the favorite here and the team that's more in the spotlight vgp have way more data to go off in terms of uh, what to pick and ban 
and what kind of strategy they want to put together against newbie and for newbie it's a little bit more difficult i was wondering if we were going to see the specter hero because newbie only have one game on it in patch 7.05 or whatever so a, a small sub patch but you know you compare that to like 10 games on legion in that same time frame uh, and specter hasn't been something that they've necessarily been playing a lot but i feel like the way that the kev major progressed and the way that the meta progressed there you know, stuff Five like Spectre and me. TB and Ursa uh, all became very, very popular towards the tail end of the tournament there. So I'm not too surprised to see the spec Dyer now. Also really back. good to go with the Legion Commander and the Sand King. They've got the initiation covered. And now they've got some easy follow-up with the Spectre. Jump in and get those kills. Really good at jumping into the back lines as well. Uh, and potentially just obliterating the Witch Doctor. And I think also really good against the... Uh, really good Ten against seconds. the Magnus Remain. just for potentially cancelling a blink, scouting him out. Uh, and that was something that we talked about, or well, that the people talked about a lot during the Kev Major was the Doom Spectre that I believe was it Liquid were playing, and they were just utilizing the Spectre to get vision, so that Doom could always go in and get the Doom target that he wanted, even if they were hidden in trees or they were hanging a long way back. Uh, it was made it much easier for the for the Doom to jump in and get those initiations, and I feel like that's the exact same thing that we're looking at here for the Legion Commander and the Sand King. If you can pop Haunt, and then Legion or Sand King is able to jump in and control the Magnus, and then they can drop the global on top of that, I think that is a very, very scary... Uh, that's a very scary fight for a VGP to have to deal with, especially with... Two supports that are not particularly defensive. Could be offlane Spirit Breaker, but I feel like we're probably looking at a position for a Spirit Breaker here. Uh, and neither of those two heroes can really accomplish, you know, that much against the against the Global Silence. And in terms of saving their mag, we'll probably see a Solar Crest picked up somewhere, and they'll be able to Solar Crest him. But I, I really don't know if that's going to be enough to save him. As VGP will get the hero of the tournament in a lot of ways. Uh, of Kiev, that was the Templar Assassin, but Newbie having that last pick, they get, you know, they get their pick in terms of what the counter is going to be against that, and they will grab a Venomancer. I find the Venomancer pick a little bit curious. It is definitely quite good against the Templar Assassin, and definitely very solid in lane, but VGP have good gank potential. They've got the Spirit Breaker. Venomancer is an extremely immobile hero. As mid lane, you know, as like immobile mid lane heroes go, Venomancer doesn't mind being ganked as much because he doesn't necessarily need as much farm, um, and he can kind of turn ganks around a little bit, throw out a, a high level Gale, and then just have a TP come in um, and potentially turn things around. So it's not necessarily a hundred percent safe uh, to you know just charge the Venomancer nonstop. And the trade off, of course, if you're charging the Venomancer nonstop is that you're also going to, uh, yeah, if you're charging the Venomancer nonstop, then you're completely opening up the offlane to just get run at by the, the Legion Commander plus whoever else is going to be up there. So how Spirit Breaker spends his time is going to be a really important, uh, really important to consider this game. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so hopefully Prepare not for too laggy for me connecting into Perfect World. It's generally pretty good. I'm going to cross my fingers uh, and hope for the best. But we'll have to see. Alright, we got Spirit Breaker TPing down, planting down an early observer ward here. Meanwhile, Magnus just gonna be trotting his way over. Templar Assassin only one tango so far. We got AO and Witch Doctor running out. Did we have an early TP for their safe lane? No. Alright, so I'm not gonna break prioritizing the safe lane as much. We already got two observer wards down from the radiant side. Get some vision around the mid lane, try and spot those ganks that are going to be heading towards the Venomancer that I was talking about. And then also just getting even more information up from top. So Nubia are kind of gambling. Not, well, not necessarily gambling, but they're expecting that the Spirit Breaker, if he's charging, he's going to be charging from uh, this top side of the map. And the combination of these two wards is going to give them all the information that they need to either set up for a counter gank. So Sand King comes and sits in these trees, and as soon as the SP charges in, you gale him and you... Burst strike him and he dies, or, you know, then the Venomancer can just back up nice and safe, uh, and maybe farm a couple of jungle camps while that while that charge is happening. So, I like this early setup here from Newbie. The other Observer Ward for the, the Dire begins. team is over on the SB right now. Looks like he's going to be blocking up mid a little bit, try and get a bit of an advantage going for his mid laner. But unfortunately for him, uh, we've also got Sand King over on the opposite side doing the exact same thing. So what, this is probably Kaka. We got S Triple C, KP of course, the Legion, 
Faith will be on Silencer, and finally, uh, uh -oh, who is the who is the carry player for? Why can I not remember who the carry player for Nubia is? This is this is this is no good. Uh, let's have a quick look. It is of course U9. All right. Okay, so in terms of the block, pretty even to start things out here. A little bit of zoning going on for poor old Mag down bottom. Just gonna abuse these trees a little bit. This, this patch of trees on the side is so annoying. There's, there's so many different ways to get fog. There's almost... It feels like there's almost no advantage to being a ranged support when the, the melee offlaner is just hiding in these trees like this, but... Yeah, nice smart play from Mag. We got oh, what, our first... No, not even our first charge heading towards mid. SB just picked up Bash. And he's looking to just zone a little bit. It does get a bash. It is giving the TA a little bit of a CS lead early on here. The XM focusing a bit more on denies than on the on the last hits. And we are going to have the Venomancer now rotating in as Triple C going for the Poison Sting level 1, now picking up the Venomous Scale level 2. So it looks like we might be seeing the uh, relatively low level Plague Warriors build this game. Sanking not too keen to commit in, but just some harassment getting thrown back and forth. Mag still doing pretty nicely for himself down bottom. Faith has realized that this big camp was blocked out, so we'll be able to get rid of that pretty quickly, but... Yeah, Mag, knowing that the Sand King is mid, feeling very confident about himself down bottom, so... Able to play really far up, and that's the advantage that they gain from having the, uh... The Spirit Breaker camping mid, is that they get a bit more information about what the Sand King is up to. Legion not actually choosing to go and contest the safe lane too much, I guess... The Ursa pick working out as intended there, and KP just going to be retreating to the jungle with an Iron Talon. Legion is a very, very fast jungle hero, so we'll be looking for a pretty reasonable Blink Dagger timing out of this, but it does mean that the Ursa is getting complete free reign uh, over on his lane as a oh, nice little haste turn is going to give Kaka the bounty steal here. Oh, Mag might be in some trouble. Sand King's made his way down. Dagger coming in. Oops, nice burst strike. But Mag's still skewering. Can they actually finish off this kill? Looks like they might be able to. Gonna come in for one touch from the Spectre. Can't she close the gap? Mag's still running. He's still running. Oh, will the Caustic Finale finish him? No, that's the slow. And that auto attack was already thrown earlier. Um, I'm just lagging. Oh, a little bit of trouble for U9. Spirit Breaker only level 1. All right, I might try the I might try I might try the quick reconnect here. Let's see. Is there anything that's gonna happen in the next thirty seconds? Maybe not. All right, quick quick reconnect might be in order. Hmm. So in, in terms of who has the onus on them to get things done this game, uh, both teams have pretty good late game. The Spectre, Venomancer, Legion Commander versus. Uh, there's a TA. Oh, and <laughs> of course I missed the first blood as I reconnect. Oh man. Alright, so what even happened? They got the skewer, shockwave, SP got like one auto attack off, and U9 is down. Alright, well I didn't think anything was gonna happen, but there you go, they they proved me wrong. Legion Commander is still farming very nicely over in the jungle. KP just making his way around. He's gonna get scouted by this Dire Observer Ward as he comes over here. There's a double damage waiting up top, so S Triple C gonna go and grab that. Still going for the zero Plague Wards build so far, and is starting to pull ahead uh, against the Templar Assassin in terms of CS, and that's only gonna get worse now that this double damage is up, though he did kinda set up DXM for that one. And SB on the wrong side of the map as far as newbies wards are concerned, so S Triple C does have to be a little bit more cautious because of that, though I believe, yeah, so long as Sand King is off the map, uh, then again, SP probably going to be a little bit cautious about going for those charges over towards the mid lane. The one other really nice thing about this Venomancer this game is not only is he good against the TA in lane, uh, he's also really, really good at kiting the Ursa around. You throw it, oh my god, alright, sounds are down. A little bit of T-Tours, KP coming in here as well. They're splitting up for these two kills. Will they actually be able to get both? They're still gonna skewer on the mag, he's gonna skewer right at the last moment. Spirit Breaker in some trouble. But does get a charge, it looks like he's gonna be okay. Spectre attempts the dagger, but will not actually connect. Mag hiding in the trees, but two more auto attacks should do it. Still has the dagger move speed. Auto attacking through. 
We'll attack moving through. And we'll actually manage to get the turnaround. So that time, they get the silencer. They force a rotation from the Legion. Uh, but they will end up losing the Magnus in the process, unfortunately, for them. Right, up top, well, Sanking trying to get what he can done. But is getting chased out of the lane by Ghost. DXM still just struggling for CS at the on the mid lane. I think he's grabbed like two CS since we last looked at him. Denied. This triple C gonna be going for the Midas build. Definitely nice to get the well, it, it's less level acceleration than it used to be, but still pretty nice on the Venomancer. I'm interested to see what he goes for for his uh, his level 10 talent, if we'll get the 30% EXP gain or the 30 move speed. Nope. Faith taking some damage. Needs to be careful. Charge coming off cooldown in one second's time. Skewer forward. Magnus is really committing for this one, but looks like they should be able to get the Sansa kill. What else can they get? The charge actually gets redirected over under the Spectre, but the TP has come in. As Triple C throws out the Gale, they also want the kill on the Magnus. Looks like U9's gonna try and chase that one down. Looks like SP should be dead, gets one last bash before he goes down. And with no skewer, should be no way for the Magnus to escape, and he will also be finished off. So I think Faith more than happy to trade his life away for two kills, though it did force the rotation out of the Venomancer, so a little bit of space for the Templar Assassin to catch back up. Radiance top tower is under attack. Gold and sweet. And what else has been happening? Looks like Witch Doctor gonna go for a little stack here. So even if the Templar Assassin does get crushed in lane, they should be able to catch her back up at least a little bit off of that. KP, 1300 gold towards his blink right now. Ursa, what's the build gonna be for him? Looks like he is just gonna be going for a Vlad's. Um, I would guess that he probably leaves the Desolator to the TA. He could also get a second Desolator. I've, I've seen that, but, um, probably what, like Vlad's Blink, Basher, something along those lines. It, it, it's such a difficult Blink, uh, blink game, both for the Ursa uh, and for the Magnus, just because there's going to be Plague Wards, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be Global, you know, not that it stops you from blinking, but it's going to stop you blinking and actually casting your abilities. Uh, and then there's also going to be the Spectre Haunt, presumably with a Radiance at some point. We've got a charge coming in for SCCC here on the mid lane, getting pincered somewhat. Templar Assassin waiting up on the high ground, going to hold on to that trap. TP out attempted, but charge perfectly timed, and looks like SCCC going to be taking a spill. He did manage to get some decent damage on the, the tier 1 mid in the meantime, so... I, mean, I don't think the worst death, but definitely a nice little bit of catch up for... The TA and some nice levels for the Skirt Breaker now level four. Mag still just playing the lane a lot. I don't really know if we've seen him back up all that much. KP in some trouble as well. It looks like the charge might not really be able to get in there close enough. Burst strike turnaround along with the haunt coming in duel onto the Spirit Breaker, but he gets the bash back that actually pushes him closer in towards the tower and might end up I think that made him take more damage overall. I'm not even sure if that would have been a oh, probably would have been a duel win otherwise. All right, so first win of the game for KP. Nice little 10 damage before he even has his Blink Dagger up. They haunted out the Spectre, but Silencer is right there to take all those juicy CS down bottom. And SB, same kind of story. Already back up. Not a CS wasted. Uh, TA just making your way into the jungle. Some treads picked up. Nothing... Shocking at all in terms of the item build so far. Gonna be picking up some clarities as well. Faith in trouble. Shockwave connects. Charge comes in. Spectre, what can she really do? The skewer has been used, so Magnus perhaps a little bit exposed, but he's still pretty tanky. Spectre getting good damage in with the Desolate, but the buddy system is definitely helping out the SP here. One more hit's gonna do it. He gets the charge. A little bit of a turnaround. Shockwave. Looks like they will not have enough damage to finish the Spectre off, unfortunately. Only had the one earned charge, it looks like, otherwise I uh, would have been able to use it to finish that kill. But spec Actually losing a lot of life just to try and chase that one down, so we'll be forced all the way back. High ground ward planted is going to get immediately dewarded by VGP here, as they do have themselves a little bit of a net worth lead right now, about 1500 and about 2.5k the experience lead as well, but new begin to look to turn that around. They've got the Blink Dagger picked up on the Legion Commander, and it's a three-man smoke behind the Venomancer, making its way towards mid. They want the pickoff, 
And they want this tier 1 tower, they're gonna jump in, KP just with the immediate duel, relying on his teammates to follow up with the damage, will it be there in time? They will not get the duel victory, but they will get the kill. There is a charge coming in from the SB at the same time, but the rest of the team not really in position to defend just yet. Mag's in the neighborhood, same kind of story for the Templar Assassin, but maybe actually just gonna back themselves up. Uh, they don't have a sentry here at the moment, so they don't actually know where the where the Tia traps are, and that would be pretty troubling for them uh, if VGP decided to take a fight. But instead, they're just going to throw the Presley attack onto the Catapult, rely on the Plague Wards, and they will be able to pick up that tower last hit. That should probably be the Midas, or very, very close to the Midas for SCCC. And unfortunately, Ghost, despite the fact that he's been left completely alone up top here, and is 89 and 28 on the CS, he is... Not really been able to threaten this tower all that much. And that is one of the big downsides of safe lane Ursa compared to, uh, you know, in comparison to other safe laners. He does, does have his blink now. Going to be looking for this kill on the Spectre. They're actually going on the Magnus at the same time. This could work out really, really badly. RP's only going to catch onto one, but they know what they want. And that's the Spectre kill. They're going to chase in and just demolish Spec. TP out from the Magnus. He's going to be A-OK. -okay. And it looks like VGP will not be able to get any further kills down here on bottom. But they got exactly what they came for. They just want to slow down this Spectre's game as much as possible. She's farming all right. Uh, but this is this is the vulnerable period while you're pooling all this gold to try and work towards your rated sand king in some trouble. Let's have a burrow strike ready to go and a sandstorm. There isn't a dust on the spirit breaker. Is there a dust anywhere else? There's a sentry on the witch doctor, but... No inventory space on the Ursa, so... Looks like Sand King is just going to be able to get away here. Oh, SK comes around the corner, does need to be careful. There's Blink available, Sandstorm gets popped immediately. Looks like Kaka's going to be okay. Silencer just going towards the Solar Crest. I mean, it's just a medallion so far, but... We, we know what patch we're playing on here. Square Breaker gonna look for the charge away, but an immediate burrow strike cancel. Should be two int for Faith coming up unless they get the deny. Nope, Global Sound's coming in. Ursa gets Gale, but he's just gonna be TPing right back to the fountain. Wants nothing to do with this fight as U9 will also be able to chase down the Witch Doctor kill. It's just the two supports going down with two very big ultimates popped. The Haunt and the Global Sounds, but... We'll see how much VGP are actually gonna be able to to capitalize off of that. Still a little bit away from the Blink Dagger on the mag, but he's gonna have it uh, right after he finishes up this camp. And looks like, okay, the, with the two ultimates down, they're actually just gonna go for the Roshan here. They've got Ursa and they've got TA. This should be extremely quick. Newbie seem to have a sneaking suspicion about what's going on here. They're gonna come in. They're throughout the nuke. Ghost losing a little bit of life, but this is still pretty fast. SCCC also making his way in. Templar Assassin in some trouble. They've got a duel ready to go. Ursa gonna try and turn this one around and get the duel victory for his teammate. He will be able to. DXM gets off one more Meld Strike. The Refraction pops up, but it gets chewed through immediately by the Venomancer damage over time. And the Urge Charge Ghost looks like he'll also be brought down. Sand King going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Spirit Breaker, but that's not a fight that he can win. RP coming out onto two. They've also got the Nether Strike. U9 losing a lot of life, but we'll be able to turn around for one more dagger. And SCCC will pick up a double in the end, as it's a four for two trade-off in newbie's favor. And that's without any of their big ultimates available. They just they knew that VGP were gonna try and make something happen while the you know, while their big ultimates were on cooldown. And unfortunately for them, their lineup doesn't really push all that well at the moment, or it doesn't really push all that well into newbie's lineup because of the overwhelming odds and the Plague Wards. I mean, it's only level one Plague Ward, but still a little bit annoying, so... I don't know. VGP really just needed to get the rest of their heroes there before they before they went for that. Oh! Skewerback almost catches KP, but he does just manage to blink at the last moment. All right, that's that is the definition of space. I'll dig that. They, they even had the Ursa make his way down here. Oh, that Ursa might be a little. Well, they, they they've got good vision around here. I was about to say that he's a long way up, but he feels pretty secure because he has has these wards around the place. So you know, similar kind of story for what KP was doing, but KP didn't actually have any vision. He just. Just saw himself getting jumped. Alright. Four man smoke. It's a five man smoke because they got the Spectre Haunt. They can take this fight at any moment. They don't really want the Witch Doctor. They're gonna scan and bypass him. Looking for bigger kills. Ghost is just up here on the high ground. 
Plague Ward, gonna scout him out. Can they get the Magnus instead? That would be a great kill. He blinks across, but he doesn't manage to make it down onto the low ground. And that means the Haunt's gonna scout him out. They get the duel, they get the win, and they're gonna look for more. Witch Doctor getting slowed up a little bit. Sand King, hot on the trail. Kaka might be looking for a Burrow Strike here. Does need to be a little bit careful. Oh, nice nuke does end up catching AO, but looks like he's gonna be A-OK. -okay. Man, this Templar Assassin's still just trying to find that last little bit of farm for her Desolator. Yeah, she's not that far behind. She is top two on net worth right now, but just really struggling to have an impact this game, especially with how, uh, well, kind of how crappy your refraction is going to end up being this whole game against the, against the Spectre, against the Venomancer. Hell, even against the Silencer. Arcane Curse messes up your refraction really, okay, really quickly. Cool. And then a hero like Templar Assassin, where you have a bunch of really low cooldown abilities that you're spamming the entire fight long, Arcane Curse can destroy you. It's you know, a very similar story to Invoker, where you're sitting there casting spells the whole fight and you don't realize that you got Arcane Cursed right at the beginning, and then you die at the end because you have a you know, one minute plus duration Arcane Curse on you. Spirit Breaker is also going for a Midas here. What's the, what is our total Midas count right now? Looks like at the moment just one on S Triple C, he's picked up a Veil as well. Has plenty of teammates to benefit from the, the amplification, not to mention himself. Uh, he did end up going for the 30 move speed, which I quite like. Again, a big focus of the Venomancer in this game is being able to kite the Ursa and kite the Templar Assassin. Uh, and I think the move speed definitely gonna be very helpful for that. Uh, could even go for some phase boots or something and you know, beat that up just that little bit more. KP, okay, looks like he's also going back for a Midas. Newbie feeling fairly confident with their late game, and I think that's, I think that's probably fair. From their perspective, the only way that VGP really win fights Radiant's is if they get the, you know, they get a big RP. But their lineup is is built for, for making life impossible for Magnus. I mean, even if the Magnus gets a decent RP up, they've got so much counter initiation as well. Sand King runs up, just gonna burst strike up under the high ground, but. They're still going to be able to bring him down. Did they even have any detection? No. They had zero detection. He actually could have just stayed sandstormed the whole time. SB might have been able to like charge over to the creeps over here or something and, and stun him, but... Anywho. We are on farm stations right now because newbie are controlling the game and all they really want to do is farm. We got 3.3k gold on the Spectre, so Radiance is slowly but surely being worked towards. Right, again, not even that slowly. Oh, another smoke out from KP. Needs to get that Midas on cooldown. Maybe a little, little pit stop for that. They do have the Sand King scouting a little bit further up on the high ground here, so they control the area around the shrine. They see the Witch Doctor, and looks like they might be content to just take that kill, but Ao is a bit suspicious. He doesn't see anything on the map right now, and they have decent vision, as a Dire Scan is gonna end up clipping these newbie heroes, making their way over to join the Spectre on the top side of the map. So Nice scan, nice map awareness, and Witch Doctor saving his own life there. And what are VGP going to do? All right, they've got the Deso. Nice little power spike for the Templar Assassin. She's got her Blink Dagger to go along with that. And they are going to look for a fight. If they could jump... Oh, they're Dyer's just going to go for Roche. All right, looks like maybe, but there's a Plague Ward in here. It is going to time out relatively soon. But instead, are they going to maybe try for this fight? Nobody's defending top just yet. As Triple C on the front line is pretty tanky. Has picked up those power treads. Ward goes out, Haunt is gonna get popped, and U9 does manage to jump away, Ursa. Initiation getting stuffed a little bit, SB's going in really deep, the Global Silence gets forced out, however, by the charge. That might be worth it for Spirit Breaker's life if they can now take a fight. Magnus now coming in, looking to make something happen, but the Plague Ward clips him just a little bit. Sand King also looking for more, Magnus, very difficult fight, which Doctor in some trouble, they will be able to jump in onto the Venomancer Ghost, blowing him up. Ao ticking down, but does have the heal to help keep him up a little bit. Sand King also lost. It's just support so far. They drop the two-man RP. How much damage follow-up can they actually get? The nice side blade spill. KP goes down. Spectre gonna try and escape. Runs up onto the high ground. They've got the vision. They've got the skewer. And they will get that kill. Alright. The, the SB forced 
the global silence, and I think that actually won them the fight. Also, the haunt got popped a little bit early, though I think that was totally fine from from Spectre. Radiance bottom tower yeah, SB, SB doing some work there. And that means Radiant's going to get set back just a little bit more. How much gold did he actually lose there? Uh, Alright, well, actually, he profited overall from the fight, but still. 5 for 3 overall. They did at least manage to get the Ursa kill, but Templar Assassin now up to 10.2k net worth. And this is with, you know, a reasonable laning counter in the Venomancer. I think this just goes to show why. Why TA was kind of the hero of the tournament for Kiev. Like, you pressure her in lane a little bit, but then she just farms so quickly that it doesn't even really matter. She's not a hero that has to go and make things happen on the map. Like, you pick a Queen of Pain, you can't sit back and farm. You just don't really have the capability for it. And you don't, you, you kind of have the late game, you know, with, with depending on what build you go for, but TA has the farm speed, she's got the late game, uh, and even without the refraction so far, she's having a pretty big impact. Oops, silencer, some trouble, gear up onto the high ground, but the charge can keep him on the low ground. Ghost doesn't care, he still had his blink off cooldown, so he picks up that kill easily. He has gone for the defusal blade, so big damage from that, especially with the empower. Uh, I think that's, that's always worth mentioning when you've got the mag on your team, all of a sudden, you know, Manta, Diffusal, these kinds of items look all that much more attractive for, for your agi carries. Yeah, I'm gonna try for the Roshan again. Kaki getting charged, Sandstorm, Burr Strike, but, well, Blink on cooldown for the Magnus right now. They will be able to use the Nether Strike, skewer him back a little bit, and that will just be one more easy kill. Nubia are split up all around the place. They don't want to fight at all right now, and at least not until the Spectre has Radiance, so... Looks like attack. they're just gonna have to... They're gonna keep hemorrhaging kills for the next little bit until they... They feel ready to take a fight. Sand King was getting somewhat close to his blink, but he's gonna buy back here to try and contest the Roshan. They're gonna jump in, they get the duel, they've got the global, there's no way to protect this Templar Assassin, she's gonna be brought down. Big plays from Nubia as they also pick up the Radiance at this exact moment. Buyback from the TA. Charge into the pit. Spirit Breaker knows that they need this Aegis, but they won't be able to get it. Spectre has picked that one up. Magnus comes in looking for the RP, but he gets burst struck. And now SB trying to retreat out, but it's an ultra for U9. Can he get anything else? Looks like the answer is no, but... VGP also expending the Templar Assassin buyback there. She's still up there in terms of the net worth, but... Nubi denying the VGP lineup at every turn. Whenever they try and go for this Roche, they've they've won that fight handedly. And I feel like this is the exact opposite of what happened to Nubi in their series against Liquid at Kiev, which was they were ahead, and then they went for Roshans, and then Liquid messed them up, and they lost the game. This time around, it's Nubi with the lineup that doesn't even really need to go near Roshan that much, and they're just exploiting the fact that it's an extremely important objective. For the Dire Team first, are going to come in, helping to keep the Venomancer alive, but the Ursa has actually managed to make his way in a little bit further. The cask bouncing around, keeping him locked in there, but now Ursa with no ultimate available could be in some trouble. Spectre zooming through the trees, trying to get in a little bit closer. Duel not going to happen from KP. RP catches onto two. Faith, all he can do is watch as the Spectre will get brought down. That's only life number one, but Ursa going to get healed up a little bit. That shrine is not active. And U9. Can he actually get anything? He throws the dagger up out of the high ground and it kills off the Ursa. Trying to... Why was he just trying to sit there and watch? What was he really hoping to accomplish? Looks like uh, Spec's dead to this Maledict. Oop, not quite. Radiance off. Stealth mode. Silencer not so lucky. He is uh, He's looking pretty dead. But, all right. U9 lives. And now he just walks away and we get some, some angry pings from VGP like he was he was in the damn trees the whole time. Ursa's like, yeah, I was just trying to stand here. And then I somehow I randomly got daggered. Oh man, there's some unfortunate deaths for Ursa there. I'll take your tribute. Alright. So we're still pretty much dead even on the net worth. We can look at our shiny new spectator features and, and see just that. EXP. Pretty similar story right now. Uh, Spectre just going for a Manta, nothing too shocking, very standard. Sand King, the buyback paid off beautifully, he's now got 2k gold, he'll have his Blink Dagger before too long, which is going to be very, very helpful. And I feel like this game only gets easier for newbie to play, the more Force Staves come online, the more tools that they have to kite around the Ursa and the Templar Assassin. And you know, speaking of Force Staff, Venomancer has one, and speaking of, about items to kite around the... 
Uh, the TA and the Ursa, we're also going to be getting an E-Blade picked up for the Venomancer, so... Very, very helpful to save your teammates once they get jumped on. Of course, the Ursa does have a Defusal Blade, but he's already been forced to chew through a lot of those charges, and... He does, of course, still have the Defusal 2 to build, but... You know, this is this is a somewhat finite resource for him, unless he's going to start rebuying uh, Defusals, which is admittedly not the worst thing in the world. Uh, he is looking towards a BKB right now. I would expect that the TA is going for the same kind of thing. Yep, so double BKB coming up, and that's going to be the really big timing for VGP to see what they can get Radiant's done. They've been winning fights so far, attack. but they've only taken a single tower, which is kind of a big problem. Oh. Global and the Haunt Pop looking for the Magnus, but they didn't manage to cancel his blink initially, and now he'll be able to skewer a little bit further away. I think if there was ever a time to fight, this is probably it for VGP. Do they have those BKBs? Oh, they are so close. Like, a hundred and something gold on the Ursa. It looks like they do have the BKB up for the Templar Assassin, and they're go gonna go for that smoke, but... Yeah, I think very very wise from Newbie, they're just gonna say, alright, we, we messed up. We just we just gotta back out here. There is a DD waiting over by top rune as well. Nine might be on a collision course here with VGP. They're gonna come around the corner. They spot him. It's Ghost in front. He's got plenty of slows. They've got the charge. It looks like there should be absolutely no way to save the Spectre. I gotta give newbie some props. The fact that. Radiant's Nobody TP'd on reaction there. Nobody's like, oh no, my carry's dying, we gotta save him, because they know while their ultimates are on cooldown, they can't take a fight. There's there's absolutely no way for them to to fight right now. So TPing would just be a waste of time. They do have a solar crest on the silencer now. That should be Ursa's BKB completed. And flying out, yes it is. He's gonna go for his defusal two in just a second. Alright, so this is this is where things get interesting. How many buildings will these 10 second and 9 second and 8 second BKBs managed to, to get for VGP. They got the tier 1 top. Looks like they're going to get this tier 2 for free as well. Though maybe a bit of a trade off down bottom as Triple C. Applying some pressure onto this tier 1. Roshan, as we can see down here, is a potential respawn in 3 minutes. We'll see after that. So it's still a little ways away, but. Oh, and this is this is smart. Check this out. So Ursa going to. Lock his Diamond's Diffusal Blade with the one charge remaining, and then he'll keep the Diffusal Blade recipe. Oop, Skewer, not quite able to catch. They're gonna jump in here as well with the Haunt. Legion Commander with the duel. Should be able to finish off the mag. They do manage to, but it is with a trade. Two for one so far. Ghost popping the BKB. Uh, Sand King is looking at him off to the side here. Jumps forward, goes for the Witch Doctor. Just barely has enough for a burst strike now. As U9 is gonna come in and finish off that kill. Where is the Templar Assassin in all of this? Looks like arriving a little bit late to this fight, and it's already over. Three for one. That's Ursa's 10 second BKB popped. Uh, the TA preserving hers. But with that, they begin to pick up the tier one, set their sights on the tier two here. I don't know if they can. Well, maybe they have enough damage to finish this. Spectre starting to hit a little bit harder as the game goes on. Ghost just showing on the mid lane. They've got great vision around this area as well, so. Makes life a lot easier. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. All right. So still very back and forth. Basically no net worth lead. Very little experience lead in favor of the Dyer. But is that translating into anything big? Not really. Some more levels on the Witch Doctor or the Spirit Breaker might be nice, but not necessarily game changing. SB's just gone for a Blade Mail, which. I don't think it's I don't think it's awful here, but I feel like for you know, for newbie I don't know if they're ever really gonna focus the Spirit Breaker. I mean the, the blade mail helps him not be focused potentially so that he can get off maybe a second charge in a fight. But um yeah, we'll see. We'll see how much value the blade mail actually gets. Legion has picked up a plate mail, but looks like KP now going to be going back for a BKB. Charge coming in, looking for the silencer. They've got the TA trapped there, but it won't be able to slow him down. The Nether Strike also coming in. Blink forward from the TA. Very aggressive silencer, looking for the turnaround. Perhaps nice bar strike coming in onto two. SB, how much is that blade mail really going to do for him? Looks like he will be able to run out. Meanwhile, up on top. Uh, Ghost is actually going to be able to jump onto S Triple C, but knowing that the Ursa is over there. They're going to commit a little bit further in for this fight. U9 chasing after Ao. The TA trap slows him down a little bit. 
Hoping that his Spectre Illusions might be able to finish the job, but it looks like it's actually Kaka. Jumping forward with the Burrow to finish that kill, and now TA. Looking for some kind of a turnaround, but blinks straight into a duel. Can they actually finish off the Legion Commander here? Looks like they might be able to, but... Not without the Templar Assassin going down, and now the Ursa getting kited, getting controlled, but the RP is huge, a cat's on the two. Sand King still waiting around on the side, Spectre somehow surviving, Manta dodges. One more auto attack to finish it off, and it will be five for three in the end, as Nubi managed to turn that fight around, even losing the Venomancer all the way over on the opposite side of the map. They still managed to win that fight, and that really does not bode well for, for VGP at all. Their BKBs... Already starting to get worn down, fight after fight, uh, and still not really making all that many inroads over onto the, the Radiant side of the map. This tier 1 tower bot is still standing. Roshan is up, and that's a pretty big deal for both teams, but unfortunately for Newbie, they kind of suck at taking Roshan. So, uh, gonna have to wait around a little bit on that one. Uh, KP, 66 dual damage. Do we have anybody else with any... Oh, well, I guess it's only gonna be the Dire Heroes. Do we have anybody else... With any dual damage, we do actually have 28 dual damage on the Templar Assassin. None on the Ursa, and none anywhere else. So, eh, a bit of bonus damage for TA, not a huge deal. She is going for what looks like a Bloodthorn at the moment, as, alright, U9 just finds himself a freebie over on poor old Witch Doctor. The newbie vision continues to be absolutely amazing. Um, really finding far more opportunities than... Uh, the Dire team to put down wards. So. Looks like they are actually going to try for the Roshan here. Oh, Kaka, hello. Alright, camera not on that ward. Maybe... Yeah, I'm just saving it for later. Meanwhile, double damage going to be spawning up outside of Rosh, but... Looks like with the Solar Crest, Newbie still able to claim that. And... Well, now they have an Aegis Spectre who is hitting... Really hitting her peak at this point. You pick up the 20 strength talent, you pick up the 400 health talent, all of a sudden your dispersion is just destroying everybody in fights, you got two lives from the Aegis. Things are looking tough for VGP. They do have pretty good high ground defense. They've got the, the Magnus, which is always helpful, but again, this is a this is a custom build, custom tuned lineup from Newbie just to make Magnus' life a living hell. So We'll see what he can get done. They don't have the Ricky or anything like that to, you know, throw down the smoke screen and prevent skewers into the base, but if they just let the Spectre hit the high ground, I don't even know if they care about the Spectre getting skewered into the base. So, uh, tough situation. Got a Blink Dagger picked up now for SCCC on his Veno, so that should help ensure the Poison Nova goes off pretty much every single fight. Uh, Shiva's as the next item as well, just because the Templar Assassin and the Ursa are so similar in terms of what items and strategies they're weak to, it makes it really easy for newbie to itemize. They just buy all the kiting items and call it a day, you know. Might see a Hex picked up at some point. Oh, KP, alright. Farming up here perhaps a little bit too long. They've got the Haunt coming in. Burrow Strike, save. Global Silence, also everything just to save KP here, but it looks like it's not going to be enough. RP also going to get dropped onto two. The Poison Nova has come out, but they're standing right on top of their shrine, though the Spectre will now be able to go to work. As Triple C going to force staff himself a little bit further away. U9, that's his first life forced out. Magnus ticking down very, very low. The Poison Nova isn't lethal, but the Urn Charge is. They've got the Bash onto Spec. Looks like they will be able to focus her down, and it's only two lost in the end for VGP. KP, uh, Newbie just not willing to cut their losses. You can understand the mindset that they were in. They're like, oh, we got the Aegis, and we have all of our cooldowns. How can we lose a fight? But, um... Just goes to show how instrumental KP has been in these last couple of fights. Getting the initiation onto the TA, getting the initiation onto the Magnus, and really giving them the opportunity to, to focus down that big important target right at the start. And without that, it will end up being a pretty nice fight for, for VGP. Also just a terrible place for a newbie Radiant's to fight, being right next to this attack. dire shrine. I think a lot of the, a lot of the Venomancer fire. damage got neutralized because of that. Alright, tier 1 down, has fallen. It's still a ways off of Roshan, given that the Aegis was just, was just popped. We've got Ursa working his way towards an Abyssal, quick BKB check, we've got 7 seconds remaining on the Ursa's BKB, and 8 seconds remaining on the Templar Assassin, so still looking relatively healthy on that front. Spec's gonna Radiant's be going for a attack. Butterfly here, so definitely need to see some, uh, uh, some Monkey King bars coming out. 
before too long on the the two big red clickers over on the dire side. TA did have the Orchid queued up a little bit earlier, but I like the decision to just go for the Diffusal Blade uh, instead. I feel like the, the Bloodthorn is... The Bloodthorn's okay this game, but could be a little bit unreliable. Like, for the heroes that you actually want to burst, like the Venomancer and the Spectre and the Legion, they're going to have ways to potentially deal with that. Uh, and if you don't go in the Legion, then the Legion can, of, of course, just press the attack the silence off, so... Oh. Magnus, they know he's farmed down on the low ground. There's the burrow, there's the blink, there's the duel. They won't even have to commit any of their ultimates here, and they get that pick off pretty much for free. That is the value of good warding. Well, I don't think they had that ward down before, but they had this ward. They saw the shockwave come out of the camp. Easy peasy. And I think VGP could definitely do with the gem around now. We do have a shadow blade up on the SB. He's starting to... You know, become a little bit more threatening in, in terms of pickoffs and in terms of how they take these fights, but still very far from being a right clicker in his own right. And spec. Alright, 4.4k gold. Time to pick up a talisman of evasion. We've also got a Heaven's Halberd on the Legion Commander, so the uh, MKB situation is starting to get pretty desperate uh, on the on the dire side. They do have the Abyssal Blade. Yeah, Dark Ursa definitely needs to go MKB. Templar Assassin, yep, also needs to go MKB. And yet another smoke. Perhaps yet another duel coming up. SP pushing up bottom. He's got himself an Arcane Rune. Is he going to go for one more wave? Will Greed be his undoing? Perhaps. AO coming out, trying to plant some wards. I've seen this story before. Blink, Burrow. Looks like they're not going to drop the duel here because Legion Commander was actually hunting on the other side, looking for a duel on one of the bigger targets, but... Will not end up finding it. Has to be just able to shadow blade his way out as U9 eh, came down bottom to check in on him, but doesn't have any detection. But newbie controlling a significant portion of the map, still not really building up that much of a net worth lead right now. Uh, and if I'm being honest, I think VGP holding their own a little bit better than I was than I was expecting. A bit of a leg spike. Hello. Perfect world, please. If this goes on, I will I will reconnect, but we'll give it 30 seconds and see what happens. We got the gem picked up for VGP. Do they have any smokes? Well, I can't check, but I can check their inventories. It looks like the answer is no, at least for the time being. They need to go and get a TA trap over in the Rashan pit, but it's still at least two minutes away from... Uh, from respawning. Spectre could choose to buy up and get her butterfly here as they get a dagger over under the Magnus. Uh, it's, it's a hard game for Mag. Whoop, jump in. Focusing onto the Legion Commander. Can they actually burst KP down? They had the Abyssal Blade. Now they've got the Bash, but the Heavens Halberd helping to keep him alive. That mischance is just way too much, and Ursa now getting counter initiated on. The Global is going to get popped. Templar Assassin diving in deep. They do manage to finish off KP, but DXM might now be in some trouble. Kaka going to be looking for the Burst Strike soon, perhaps, but the Nether Strike going to keep him locked down. The SB will sacrifice himself to try and get the TA out of here. But TA still in some trouble. Very difficult to escape from this Spectre, and now SCCC and Kaka both on the case. TA got the kill on the... Got the kill on the Legion Commander, but... Not worth. You would expect an Ursa with an Abyssal Blade to be able to kill this Legion Commander, but, uh... Turns out that evasion is good. I'll take your tribute. She doesn't have an evasion talent or anything like that, no. It does have plus 7 armor, so... 30 armor on... Uh, on KP here, even without the, the AC completed. But 70 seconds wait before the TA is going to be back up. There is a haunt available, but no global for 70, so it looks like they're going to get away with this, and in the end, it's just going to be some more farm time for newbie, uh, some more time to build up this advantage that they've got going right now. Illusion! What's Kaka going for? He's going to be going for an Ags. What is our friend Sansa going for? Yep, more Force Stabs cool. on the way. I think definitely, as I was saying earlier, the way to deal with the, the Ursa and the TA this game. Even if the Ursa jumps in an Abyssal Blade to somebody, if you're facing the right direction, then you just double Force Staff them to freedom. It's very, very straightforward. BGP very reliant on jumping in and bursting somebody down, but Mag just... He's, he's on Struggle Street. 
I wonder if a Shadow Blade would, would be helpful for him. Um, did they end up losing their gem? No, he still got it. I'm, I'm looking right at it. Um, so maybe a Shadow Blade would be helpful. Of course, you'll still see, you know, the mysterious Spectre Illusion following around absolutely nothing. So you have an idea of, of what's going on. And his blink is still going to get cancelled, potentially, by that first uh, first Radiance tick or whatnot. But could still be helpful in terms of getting a little bit closer into these fights and then getting those initiations that he's been looking for. Roshan's going to be back up in just a couple of seconds. There he is. I believe neither team has actually scouted this just yet, so this could get interesting. And speaking of scouting, we've actually got three of newbies standing right on top of a Dire Observer Ward right now. But the Spectre knows no fear and continues to... Just bully these these poor VGP heroes away from their own jungle. All right. Well, we talked about the BKB timing. The BKB timing did pretty much zilch. Let's see if these uh, MKBs are going to be enough to turn the game. But Roshan's already down. That's an Aegis and Cheese. You give the Cheese to the spec. All right. Aegis on the Venomancer. I guess he can go and hit buildings a little bit more with that. Uh, Mag. Just smoked. They're going for the unexpected play here of taking an immediate fight. Burst Strike's going to come in and catch the Templar Assassin Haunt. Also making its way through those Refraction Charges getting chewed up very quickly despite having the extra ones. They will drop the Abyssal Blade onto KP's head, but can they actually focus him down? And a couple of misses so far. Another lucky miss that TA shot did not finish him off, and now Ghost is in big trouble. The Dagger also going to continue chasing after the TA as they now get the duel over onto the Magnus, finishing him off. Another fight with no RP. And KP once again surviving on an absolute sliver of health. He was he was one shot from death, but well, that's that's radiance plus heaven's halberd plus solar crest for you. And now the high ground awaits. There is a buyback on the mag. There is a buyback on the spirit breaker, but is that going to be enough? The global's down. The haunt is down. So I don't know how many more opportunities they're going to get, but. Looks like the call for now is to just sack some buildings. Unfortunately, Ursa in the hole for 60 seconds is very short of buyback. He actually bought both of his javelins before that fight, so... Looks like this might just be Megas? We're not gonna do anything? It's not like there's a 2-2 bot or anything. We still, still have the Aegis on the Venomancer. Yep, that's Triple C. He's on his way down. He's got his super plague wards. Looks like VGP maybe just talking about this game a little bit. Okay, SP's gonna go in. Charging through, on to KP. Can he finish him off? <laughs> Alright, that nether strike puts him in. That is magical damage, so the E-Blade not really helping out all that much. But SP loses his life for that one. U9 still just playing the objective. Finishes off the Mega Creeps. And that is gonna be the GG well played call. So, newbie, end up winning this first game in fairly convincing fashion. If you looked at the graphs, it, it was pretty close, but I feel like that's the TA and the Ursa just, well, especially the Magnus as well, just really struggled to get anything done against Newbie's lineup. And I think a lot of it was just, a big portion of this graph is just Newbie waiting for their Spectre to come online and waiting for the Legion Commander to get her items with her, her Midas. And so I think because of that, you know, Newbie, very clear game plan, Pretty good execution. There were some really nice moments there from VGP, like the Spirit Breaker charging in and forcing the global, and then the ensuing fight they won because of that. So that was a really nice flank, and they had some some nice ideas. But I guess, if anything, the thing that they really needed to do was that first time that they went for the Roshan, they needed to just bring their other heroes. The, the global and the haunt were both used. They could have waited for their two supports to respawn because it's like a 25 second respawn. And then they could have just gone to the pit as five and had the Magnus there with his Blink Dagger ready to go, which I think he'd only just picked up. And I think if they do that, then maybe they get a good RP, they counter initiate the Blink Duel or something like that, and then they get the Aegis and, you know, game progresses pretty differently from there. But those two botched Roshans, and especially the first one, uh, really, really the nail in the coffin, I think, for, for VGP. So that's going to wrap it up for game one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll be back for game two very, very soon.